Swyphen. I mean Swyphen. Okay, I'm just going to record before anyone else comes into trauma because of HIPAA. So let me just show you our recess bay. So over here you have your blood, you know, someone's bleeding out, you need that. Over here you have some carts, you have your crash cart, you have the stretcher, you have the ultrasound over here, you have all different carts, urology, trauma, etc. And when someone comes in, they're placed on the stretcher right away. If they're trauma, they take off their clothing, put them on a gown, they weigh them for, for medication. Over here, you just see, you know, you could add in oxygen, you could put in suction, the stuff to see on um, the eyes. You have everything in your trauma bay. So it's 3 a.m. and the cafeteria is open now. It's open from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. I'm going to grab something. Okay, so we got our coffee and our food, and we're ready to go back. We're back in the bedroom now, 7 a.m. Medication, and then we're done. Yay. So now we're just gonna give them medication, do vitals again. We're gonna wait until they come back from huddle, which usually is like 20 minutes, so like 7.20, they should be back from huddle. And then we give report, nurse to nurse report um, by the computer, and then we do a bedside report. And then we go home. So excited. I'm exhausted and that's it. So let me pull my medication. So we're heading to my car right now. And it's already it's already very late. I have to bring my daughter at 8.15 and I'm running late because the person who helped report for me came late. So unfortunately these stuff happen and or even other stuff, your patient deteriorates right when seven o'clock happens so then it's you and you have to do anything that you're running late and this stuff happens quite frequently unfortunately and thank god i live i live close to the hospital because i could just run right back but either way we're on our way home now and i'm gonna watch my kids for a little bit play with them um and then go to sleep so that's our plan for today and tonight. And thank God I'm not on shift tonight again. When I have shift that night again, then I'll sleep a little longer till like two o'clock. And if I do not have shift, I'll try to wake up around 12, 30. Okay, so I'm on my way back home now. I'm just gonna do a quick video of what I could not video. A lot of stuff I cannot video and I cannot say due to HIPAA. I'll just tell you how the ED works and what how it would work if you're a nurse. The way the emergency room works is that you have a triage nurse, you have a flex nurse, and then you have your regular nurses and a charge nurse. So the triage nurse is that when you come in and you walk into the emergency room, you're meet by a triage nurse who says why are you here. The registration takes any information and then they sit you down and then they bring you into the ED when it's your turn. The flex nurse is the one that the ambulance is coming to a different entrance, not the same one that you would come in if you're trying to walk into the emergency room. So the ambulances come in and they meet the flex nurse. The flex nurse is the one that also triages and triaging is very important and you need someone experienced for that. The reason for that is because if you triage someone a low number, a four or five, right? And then they end up having, they end up being much more serious. They're in sepsis or they're having a heart attack. If you're triaging them a four or five, the doctor only has to see them much later on. So for that reason, you have to really know, you have to be experienced and know like this symptom, you know, could mean this, this could mean this, etc. So then once they they get triage, they tell you, go to this nurse. So if I'm the nurse in the back, the MS comes to me and says, hi, I have a patient for you. You can't say no, they're there. You tell them where to put your patient, in which room, and then you get a report from EMS. Then the provider comes to see the 
see the patient. It could be an hour and a half later. It could be right away. It really depends how crazy the ER is and how high acuity that patient is. If they're like a one, if they're level, if they're a one or a two, they're going straight to the recess bay before they come back to you. And you have a recess nurse who takes care of that patient until they're stable, somewhat stable, and they come back to the main ED. But anyways, you have your patient. Usually you'll have a full workup on your patient. Let's say they come in with abdominal pain, so you'll do your workup. They'll get, um, you give them contrast to drink, and then you send them to CAT scan. Then you wait for the results, and then depending on that, you either discharge them home with medication or they get admitted. And that that's pretty much how it works. So you keep going through patients, either admitted and then they're sent upstairs to a um, a floor or they're discharged and they're sent home then you get more patients it's like fun it's um high pay it's high fast pace and not boring and very little charting but at the same point it's a lot crazy and very hectic and you know people are scared for the license i'll tell you why because on the main floor let's just say there's six each nurse has six beds. They're not going to give you another patient because there's no room. In the emergency room, they just stack them in. So they'll go in the hallway. They'll go in this room. The next patient's over there. They'll go right in front of you. They'll just keep stacking them in depending on how, how they come in. And hospitals, what they should be doing is going on divert and saying we don't have enough staff or we, don't have, or we have too many patients and we can't accept you. But they don't because of money and they lose money and it's a whole political business thing. So basically... Because of that, you are you could have anywhere between like four patients in the ED, four patients assigned to you at a time to like ten patients, which is really not good, a big patient safety problem, and your license is at risk. And people get really burnt out from the ED because you know it's just very high pace, a lot of patients screaming, um, you know, it's just very high pace. So that's pretty much it. That's basically how our whole day goes. There are times where it's more crazier, you know, like usually not everybody's coming in at 3 a.m. And usually the people who are coming in at 3 a.m. are usually the most critical patients because you're not waking up at 3 a.m. to and getting out of bed in the freezing cold to get your Tylenol. But as opposed to if you're having a stroke, you're coming in no matter what the weather is. So that's pretty much it. And I'm home now because, thank God, I live very close to my hospital, which is a big plus. And one of the reasons I um, like my hospital a lot. And that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions about what ED nurses do, then please contact me.